Welcome. I'm Gary. And I'm Fauna. And you are watching the first in a long series of what we call Fiber Talk Starters. And this is the long ago promise series of videos for beginners. And yeah. our plan is to break down needlework, all aspects of it, break it down into small little 10 or 15 minute bites and help you with all the finer details to what degree we can and uh, get you started if you're a beginner or if you're trying a new technique, we'll help you get started in that area where you know something that you've not done before uh, will help you get started. And this first one is sponsored by the Shepherd's Needle in Little Rock, Arkansas. So we appreciate that. Uh, good to have support for these things. Shepherd's Needle is a needle art shop that specializes in cross stitch, punch needle, and a growing needlepoint uh, section department, department we'll call it, that yeah. serves the needs of their local customers. They offer classes, retreats, workshops. They ship worldwide. And if you're in Little Rock, Arkansas, you're invited to, to stop in. Or if you're not, go to their online shop and, and do some shopping, do some exploring. And uh, you can learn more. Their website is Shepherds, Shepherds with an S, shepherdsneedle.com. And their website is right at the top of the screen in case you can't understand me. So there we have it. So thanks to Shepherds Needle for sponsoring this first one. And our first topic, we're going to start with the basics. And that first topic is, is the ground cloth. What is the ground cloth? What are the different kinds of ground cloth that you encounter in needlework? Not just cross stitch, not just needlepoint. But in all of them, what are the different kinds that you uh, that you encounter? Just to give you a, a, a reference. And so, if you're if you're a cross stitcher, then we're going to talk about some embroider some uh, uh, canvas for needle pointers. So someday you come along and say, "Hey, I'd like to do some needle point. I don't even know what I buy." Well, this will help you determine what to buy. So the first one we're going to do is start with a standard cross stitch ground cloth, and the first one is Ada. So Ada is kind of, I mean, I think the standard, I think we all started on Ada at some point, right? If we did cross. Yeah, we had to. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, it, <laughs> I mean, you don't have to, but. <laughs> but, but at one time it yeah. was kind of generally viewed as the ground cloth. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Particularly. It's very good for beginners to learn on Ada just to kind of get the feel of how to cross stitch and. I think all of, you know, lots of people start on Ada. Right. And it has it has a decided advantage, you know, not just for beginners. And that's kind of the ongoing debate. Is it just a beginner cloth? Not even close. Because right behind you is Jesus done on, um, you know, that anybody. 14. 14 count Ada. And uh, uh, no, it's not a beginner cloth at all. It's a choice that you make for ground cloth. And the nice thing right. is, is it, it has very well and clearly defined four corners Holes. for each x yeah there's right. no doubt about where to put the needle and mm -hmm. and so that's a real plus and it also gives you because there's a nice in between those four uh, little holes there's a nice body of of cloth or thread that gives you your 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 stitching thread a nice place to lay so you get a nice even x four very well defined almost unmovable holes that give a nice square x and something for that thread to lay on. So it's, right. it's it, to me, that it really gives a very uniform X. When, yeah, when I would stitching. agree with that. Yeah, very uniform. So it, to me, that's a huge plus. Right. And you can, in, in nowadays, in the needlework market, you know, there's, it helps people that have poor eyesight too. Like yes. older people that have, you know, deteriorating eyesight it's very easy for them to stitch on ada right. and also in today's needlework industry there's several dye houses that sell beautiful dyed ada fabrics you know for the consumer so you don't you're not stuck with just white and oatmeal and antique ivory and those <laughs> colors you can right. get wide range of, right. of ada colors for your well, yeah, stitching and, needs. yeah and that's that's huge because it did not used to be the case and mm -hmm. now you can get mottled and swirled and all kinds of colors. Uh, and some dyers make the cloth a real uh, supple and soft uh, cloth yeah. in their process. And some it stays very rigid. And so you get mm -hmm. to make that choice too. So that's right. Ada. 
and then mm -hmm. its cousin or its sister or brother or whatever is is linen. Comes in a wide variety of counts. Right. Yes. Um, linen is a natural made product out of flax. And, um, but one of the drawbacks about linen is, is that you, some of the, the flax threads or strings or whatever that they're weaving are very in size of width. So right. that can be hard for some people to distinguish where the holes are um, on linen, but it gives a much finer appearance to the stitching. Um, really, it's not as boxy looking as what Ada can sometimes be. Um, so that's a that's a, just another, yeah. you know. Yeah, little... and that, and that the, the varying widths of thread, uh, warp and weft, the varying widths of thread throw people off. Yeah, because like, there'll be a big fat one, and right next to it'll be like a hair thin one. But mm -hmm. I found I found that you think, oh, then that'll give me really uneven X's all the time. But it tends to average out. I, I've never I think really, it does too. yeah, I've never really thought it was that big of an issue. It just tends to average out across the piece, and so I just don't even think about it anymore. But it is confusing, and sometimes if there's a hair thin uh, thread next to a fat one. You can overlook that hair thin one, so you got to pay attention to that. But uh, right, and then linen, yeah, you can get linen all counts up to 60, 60 threads, sixty-three, yeah, sixty-three threads, mm -hmm. uh, sixty, and and by threads, number of threads per inch. So no matter which way <laughs> you count, it's number of threads per inch. So a forty, mm -hmm. a forty count linen has forty threads per inch. Right, and and uh, and then we'll in a future one we'll talk about how that determines size and uh, of, of your piece and how you can use that to advantage to vary your, your design size according to what you want. But uh, right. and linen, uh, uh, boy, just a, a truckload of colors. Is there yeah. really any limit? I don't know that there's any limit to colors. I don't think there is either. Uh, and then some of their, one thing that's a drawback about linen is that they might, those thicker threads sometimes also will have like a whole hunk of the flax, you know, it's called a slub. And then you have some people that, you know, do you remove the slubs or do you keep the slubs? And, um, or do you like some of those thicker threads are actually slubs mm -hmm. and do you weave those down, pull those out? And it, it has to be, a, I think, a personal choice on that. I don't think that there's a right or a wrong no. answer. You just have to, be very careful if you're planning on tweezer right. and down those those slubs by picking them out gently right. with your needle or whatever. So, yeah, I've had I've had some where I've taken a tweezer to them and it just came right off and underneath it was a good solid thread. And then I've right. had others where wait a minute, I better leave this alone because yeah, <laughs> I might just damage the whole thing here. Right. Um, yeah. So, yeah. I've I've yeah. had the same circumstances. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. So linen, you know, and people again, this is something where people will talk about in cross stitch where you advance to linen. You don't advance yeah. to linen. It's just a choice you make in ground cloth for what look you want and how you prefer to stitch. That's right. all it is. You don't is, advance right. to linen. And, and no. uh, for some, it's it's a challenge to think about stitching on linen where you're stitching over two threads instead of stitching in a box. But once you get that, once you dig in a little bit and do that, it's it's nothing. And right. um, uh, so, uh, so if people say, well, you're not advanced yet to linen, so you're not an advanced stitcher. That's just hogwash. It, it's yeah. what you choose. I mean, look at how right. many how many thousands and thousands of stitches have you done, and and one of your more recent projects is Jesus on Ada, because right. it looks good and you liked it. Yeah, choice I did. you made. And yep. Yeah, it yep. was. So then we move on to uh, well, and then part of linen, a a close cousin is even weave. And there are various kinds of even weave cloths, ground cloths, mm -hmm. and that means that the uh, the threads going both ways are the same thickness. Right. Right. You don't get any variation. No. No. And like like names for even weave would be Lagana, mm -hmm. Monaco, uh, things like that. What's right. some other ones? Monaco. 
I don't, I don't think of any more. Lugana is the one I've used the most. Yeah. But Jovelin. Jovelin's yeah, another there you one. Go. Yeah. Yeah. So those threads yeah. are very even. So if, if that throws you off, if that throws you off, then go to an even weave. You know, you don't want to do on Ada. Go to an even weave and, and, and try the, that. Yeah, and try that and see if that doesn't make things more comfortable for you. So right. really, I think you know, personally, if you're going from Ada and you want to try to learn how to stitch on linen or an even weave, even weave is the next choice that I think. That's how I did it anyways. And I found it much easier to learn how to stitch over two threads yeah. on even weave rather than linen. Because I tried linen and I like thought, okay, never again am I going to stitch on <laughs> linen. And I went back to Ada. And then I thought, you know, I can, oh, let me try it again. And so I tried even weave and then that was much easier to learn on. And then once you get the hang of stitching over two and what that means and how it feels and the rhythm of it, then it's easier to go to linen and just realize that you're going to have like variation in the thread right. width. So. Right. But once, you know, once you leave uh, that uh, very clearly defined four holes in a box Ada structure and, and mm -hmm. go to even weave or linen, once you do a little bit of that, uh, you won't think about it again. It just is no. just, just another cloth to stitch on. Um, yeah. Right. You know, just another cloth and a different, different thing. So then mm -hmm. if you move to a uh, needle point, then there, there are effectively two types of needlepoint canvas. I mean, uh, needlepoint point canvas, canvas uh, uh, is very rigid, heavily starched, and um, uh, uh, bigger holes. So mm -hmm. you, can get, you can get canvas, needlepoint canvas in 12, 12 threads per inch, which is quite large. Most needlepoint designs are done on 18. That's the most common by far. Say, I don't know, 70, 75% of needlepoint canvases are 18 count. That's just standard. And then there's mm -hmm. Congress cloth, which is 24 count. And if people want more detail, uh, less stair step on angles, that kind of thing, they'll tend to go to Congress cloth because it's 24 count. And so you get a finer, more detailed look. And then uh, people like Gay Ann Rogers with her detailed um, uh, portrait designs, that gives her more flexibility and, and finer curves and facial features than she can get with 18 point. So that's, mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, that's and, and that comes in a variety of, of colors. Uh, Needlepoint canvas is, you can get that in a whole truckload of colors too, in addition to white, off-white, and black. But uh, yeah, there's... Any more, really, all of it is is can be dyed. Just people dye it just about any way they want. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, There's and, even modeled ones, right? Oh yes. Oh There's, yes. Yeah. 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 No, I uh, matter of fact, uh, here's here's one right here, modeled. Mm, yeah. That's eighteen point needle point canvas modeled. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can get yeah. yeah there's all kinds of any more people dye. It's like thread. You can get it just about any way right. you want. So that's needle point canvas. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, then embroidery cloth. Yeah, is another thing. So if you're doing surface embroidery, now you want a cloth that is not clearly defined grid holes, mm -hmm. because you want you're using a, a, a sharp needle, and you want to be able to put it in where you want it. You don't want a hole in a grid telling you where it's going to go. So. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and, and of course, there is a, a ton of of very fine linens and, and other cloths for um, for surface embroidery. Right. Yeah. What do you? What is the name? Like, I believe that you can do it on quilting cotton yes. if you wanted to, because it's very tightly. You want a tightly woven right. cloth to yeah. hold your stitches on the surface. Right, and that's that's really all it is. I mean, it's a tightly mm -hmm. woven so that you're not. That your needle is not directed into a hole. You can put it wherever right. you want. Because yeah, you can take a, a dish towel, you can take a bed sheet, whatever, and do surface embroidery on it. It'll work perfect. Right. Yeah. And and some of them now, uh, if if you talk to Mary Corbett, uh, she'll give suggestions that you put a backing, like a a muslin backing on, and have two layers. Mm. And, mm. Uh, uh, so sometimes that's that's important. Trish Burr is another one with surface embroidery often has you put 
a, uh, a muslin backing on and, and stitch with that. And uh, for instance, this here, this is Alba Maxima. Uh, you can't tell, I mean, it's white cloth, but it's Alba Maxima linen. And then it's just a simple muslin on the back, just a cheap old cotton muslin. And then you stitch, and these are white threads, so you can't see very well, but, but you can see the design. And then you just stitch right through the whole thing. But that gives some extra stability to the, uh, to the uh, surface cloth, which Alba Maxima really doesn't need it. But Trish Burr said to do it. And, you know, you don't question Trish Burr. You just do it, what she says. <laughs> Trish says you do it. Yep. So, and then, and then all of them, it's thread count. The thread right. count determines. And, and threads is number of threads per inch. And if it's, if it's an even weave thing, then it's the same number of threads up and down and side to side, the warp and the weft. Uh, but then now some linens will be an uneven weave. Right. So, so like, yeah. So th there's all kinds of, of options. Uh, if you do an uneven weave, though, you want to pay attention because particularly if you're doing letters, depending on how you orient that cloth, your letters might be taller <laughs> or squatter, depending mm -hmm. on how you do it. So you have to watch that. So those are the basic, those are the basic uh, ground cloths. I mean, uh, uh, anything else would be a really off the reservation kind of kind of cloth, and I don't know what that would even be. So, mm -mm. Um, no, I don't either. Yep. So there it is. Our uh, our first starter on ground cloth, uh, Ada linen, needlepoint canvas, and embroidery cloth. And again, thanks to the Shepherd's Needle in Little Rock, Arkansas, for sponsoring us. And we'll be back uh, soon with a second one. Thanks yep. for watching. Bye-bye.